Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back at Greg's Whiskey Guide from Paris. I'm Gregoire, providing you uh, my opinions and my uh, experience and uh, a bit of information as well about whiskey. And today this is a kind of controversial uh, topic, uh, but it is my experience, so I have to share it at some point, even if some of you might already know what it is all about. If you follow me well, or uh, on Discord, or not my Discord, but other people's Discord, I mean. What's going on with Artbeg and what's going on with Artbeg 10 especially? Let's find out. And yeah, the fan is strong, so I have to be careful. I didn't put the usual coins on it because uh, the smoke is so pungent that I will uh, really struggle to uh, to get uh, the coins clean after that. This is also the problem with um, this type of smoke and the way our bag is done. This is also why after experimenting this uh, confrontation between Artbeg 10 and Port Charlotte 10, two releases I had recently, uh, I mean bottlings, I, I did um, finally decide not to do the comparison in video because uh, the basically the not giving away everything, but the the experience of the the pitted smoke from Artbeg did ruin the experience of tasting of the poor child that was after it diminished its qualities its qualities while i tasted the two separately and uh it was more interesting so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna keep up into the artbeck family with two other releases one official one which will be a quite rare one the almost there rare now and we'll finish with the AR7 from Elixir Distillers, uh, which has a particular ty cask type, so it kind of changes, of course, the distillery house style a bit. But I was offered this uh, by some friends uh, for a birthday, so and it's an expensive one. And I know some of you are interested in uh, the elements of Isle range. I'm preparing a, another video about that, but I still have to get me some recent releases to make it more interesting for all the people. Uh, I got my Artbeck 10 bottle. This is um, batch L24 What is this? Uh, 01 220, uh, if I see it well. Okay, not well prepared, Greg. Uh, once again, and I don't see nothing there. Uh, okay, 13. No, not sure about that. Anyway, this is the most important information is that this was bottled in 24 of February of 2023. But before we get into that, I'm gonna, uh, I uh, want to speak a bit about my experience with our bag, which is not negative I mean not only <laughs> that has positives and negatives and uh, for those who don't know it uh, yet well just a bit of a recap of this theory presentation first uh, hoping I'm not gonna be too long because I managed to get a lot of infos and I'm not sure I will have the time to make it still palatable as a video uh, tasting video to ex to explain you it all um, so it's a distillery from 1794 uh, first record that was found but uh, it, uh, the official date that's on the bottles are 1816 Bearing in mind that every distillery uh, stating there before 1824 or 1823 uh, is illegal because uh, the grant to distill by George IV uh, was given first to Glenlivet, the Glenlivet distillery in 1823 and applied officially in 1824. So all the dates that the distillery give are uh, unofficial, uh, I mean, in terms of legal things. 
Now we all know that uh, a lot of these distilleries were distilling back into the, for most of them, the, uh, I mean the famous ones in, in the 18th, uh, late 18th or uh, early 19th uh, century. Okay. Um, Ardbeg. So Ardbeg uh, changed a lot of uh, owners. Uh, I'll speak about the production after. Uh, to make a long story short, I will use this, but not only this, because some informations there are wrong or incomplete. Uh, I mean, this is a, a great source of infos, but are there always some approximative things? I found when uh, to summarize things. Uh, so first record was 1784 by Alexander Stewart, then uh, MacDougall's took over, etc., uh, etc. Et An important date is uh, 1973 when, um, yeah, officially <laughs> Ardbeg was founded only in 1959. Uh, Hiram Walker and uh, DCL, Distillers Company Limited. So kind of pre Diageo, um, Hiram Walker and, and Sons, in fact, uh, took over in 1973 for 300,000 pounds. Interesting. Uh, then the Hiram Walker got total control on the distillery in 1977. Uh, the distillery did close in, 80, in 1981. There has been Allied Lions, which I know are Allied Distillers and Allied Domic, that several names for the same company, who took over in 1987. Uh, production was only restored in 1989 uh, using Port Ellen malt. But the distillery closed again in 1996. Before 1997, Glenmore and GPLC, a uh, public limited company, uh, buys the distillery for seven million. Uh, and for those who don't know, uh, and yeah, the production, uh, where is it written? I think it's here. The production resumes in, in 1998, if I'm not mistaken, um, or say late 1997. So the almost there you're going to see is one of the first releases of the new style of Ardbeg. Ardbeg 10 that we're going to try uh, was initially uh, produced uh, in the, in the year to launch in the year 2000, but when it was relaunched as the Renaissance uh, release uh, uh, and then new releases each year, it was rather 2008. Uh, so that's it for the main fact that everybody knows. Now, uh, the type of steel they have, yeah, I'm going to speak also about, I uh, forgot something. The type of steel they have, you can see here in this very interesting book, uh, World Whiskies, which is a, a collective book through the supervision of uh, uh, Charles McLean. All kinds of uh, steels, you can see the steel shape influences the uh, the distillate, but also, of course, the way you uh, charge the steel, the quantity, and also the line arm uh, position, and also uh, if there is a uh, um, a, um, a reflux boil like there or not. So this is, n I'm not sure it's Arbeck steel, but it is a, a lamp glass style steel. Uh, yeah, this is a French version of the book. So this means in theory, a bigger contact with, um, with distillate and less reflux, so heavier heavier uh, spirit but there are purif purifiers that has been installed there uh, also the distillery went into a big renovation uh, in the in the last years and now they have a new steel house the old uh, one is not allowed to be used uh, there's four steels in there uh, the big capacity steels uh, over one uh, 11,000 ones uh, liters 
the five stainless steels, uh, not going to much details, and uh, 12 Oregon pine wash bags. Uh, fermenters are going from 66 to 72 hours, but the current uh, time is rather around 66, according to Colin Gordon, the, the new uh, manager after Mickey Heads retired. Uh, then you have uh some warehouses one of which uh, is on the island of 18000 uh, capacity uh, casks um, the production is increasing still the extension of the distillery the the goal is to go to up to 2.8 millions of liters of alcohol per annum but it's currently between 1.8 and they say probably 2.5 and next year um, what else can i say yeah statements from people from the uh, which i had the chance to meet uh bill lumsden which is uh leading everything that's uh Picking, creating new expressions, uh, picking casks, experimenting as as well as in Glenmore and Jeep, so belonging to the same group. Uh, Bill Lumsden could distill; he has a PhD of uh, brewing and distilling, but he use he he talks theoretically to the distillers, etc. To also to to, for instance, lately uh, they released the heavy uh, vapors. Odd big expressions, and for that one, they cut uh, the uh, they shut down the purifiers to get something heavier, something different. Um, so we have to sum up things: a heavy style of uh, whiskey made potentially by the big steels and no uh, reflux boil, but the cut and the way they use the purifiers make it sweeter than expected. Now that said, we have around 50 to 60 ppm and most likely 54, 55 as I understand it. Uh, then also when they took over uh, in this very good book, uh, World Atlas of Whiskey by Dave Room in the first re uh, edition here, um, it says they have a problem of stocks when they took over in 1998 and restart production. So they had uh, all stocks. Uh, there was a lot of refill cask of not such good quality as they say. Uh, they have modified things since 1997. Uh, so they are doing longer fermentation than before. Uh, uh, shorter fermentation, uh, Bill says, uh, gives uh, too much pungency to the smoke, while a longer one brings creamy and a bit more of acidity. Um, so yeah, they modified also the way they're running the steels. Uh, they say also they use more American oak of first fill than before. Uh, for the Arbic 10, I will repeat it again, it's first fill and refill bourbon cask. I heard a while ago, a decade ago, there were a lot of Jack Daniels casks, so uh, it's still bourbon, even if it's called Tennessee whiskey, but it's mellowed by the, the Lincoln County process with the charcoal layers, three meters of charcoal layers uh, of uh, maple wood, so might impact the taste as well. Uh, what else he says uh, that is not often said? Yeah, it talks of Yugadol. We're not going to speak of Yugadol a lot. Um, yeah, I tasted a lot of art bags. I didn't check prior to that. Uh, I could pause to tell you how many. Okay, so, uh, there's something also I wanted to say that is not 100% sure as I struggle to find records and also I apologize, I struggle to find a picture for you on time. So I'm not going to show you Ardbeck kilns, but rather Port Ellen kilns, Port Ellen maltings, at least the, year, the, the pagoda roof uh, ones. On this one, that you, I want to talk about the, the what's the name? uh the check valve the check valve the clapet in french 
which normally you, you could uh, you supposed to see those mobile and able to sh uh, to close or open but uh, it, yeah, I heard that a decade ago so it has to be taken with a pinch of salt I don't know if it's still uh, reliable info I heard that the particularity of Outbag compared to the other distilleries was their capacity and choice to close completely those check valves on the kiln when they wanted to produce a heavier spirit. For instance, Supernova. I don't know if it's still true, but maybe this is to be taken into uh, account to evaluate uh, this distillery's uh, work. So that's it for the main fact i'm sure i forgot uh, a few things let's see what this one says yeah lots of books i also went to websites to check out about pete yeah so uh when they took over in 1997 Bill Lumsden quotes the fact they had a, an old stock of which some of uh, 10 years old were not very good casks so they had to add older casks so for those who had the, the first versions of the 10 years old it's possible to have older casks in it now as you know with all that's happening there's less and less old casks in uh, in uh, your age statement whiskies so let's see what's going on with this one uh, but before we go into this I'm gonna talk about my experience with art bag which uh, I don't want to come across as I hate art bag the title was a bit provocative love or hate it's more love or hate for the art bag 10 than for the whole uh, distillery and company uh, well to be uh, precise but before I speak about this one I want to quickly have a uh, speak about the expressions I tried uh, so far uh, because I also lost my notes about almost there so I have to rely on what's on the uh, uh, what's in there why did I want it to check out that? Uh, yeah, I know. It's because I wanted to speak about uh, some older releases and some rare ones. In the Demystifying Art Bag Marketing Tricks video, you can find a list and a quick quote about the, the expressions I was able to try. 45 different expressions so i cannot speak about everyone now i have notes for most of them um, uh, yeah i forgot to mention there were unpitied or very lightly pitied expressions of uh, art bags such as blazda uh, which was i don't want to mistake which an uh, interesting one i tried it and, and i liked it uh, blazda if i remember well when was it launched yeah, the mistake on the launch of the uh, almost there I have here. It's a pity. It's not 2006, it's 2007. Uh, so 2008, it seems the blast that uh, the new 10 years old Cory Rec and Renaissance and more number two uh, were launched. Supernova was launched since 2009. Um, and Yugadel, yeah, 2003, I heard uh, the master, uh, the new uh, manager said 2004, so you see. Uh, what I wanted to say, yeah, they, in 2006 I tried the old 17 years old, which was 40% uh, ABV, but it was very lightly pitted, quite an interesting one. I rate it quite high. Uh, one that allow missing in my collection is the uh, was made in 2007 to replace it. It was Eric Nambist, uh, beautiful whiskey, one of the most complex, a rated 896 uh, out of 100. Uh, what else? I had the privilege to try. Uh, I will talk uh, mostly about the official releases because I tried also some 1974 Gordon McPhail Connoisseur Choice starting whiskey. 
the official 30 years old guaranteed 30 years old 30 uh, very old etc 40 percenter but fantastic whiskey uh, really uh, something super delicate i had the chance to try with some friends i'm uh, not gonna go too much into this now but let's talk about this what happened with uh, our big 10 and in my experience what happened is that i was unlucky i tried the Arbic 10 in several uh, occasions several shows since i mean 2022 was the first time i tried the Arbic 10 um, first discovery of scotland uh, four years after I started my whiskey journey very shyly at the beginning and more intensively after my uh, my journey uh, at Glenmorangie, uh, Glenmorangie uh, on the Highlands for a long weekend that was uh, I will remember all my life it basically in which I had my first master class uh, by um, Graham Unson who now works at Tomatin after having works at uh clan glasso which is weird uh all these and basically he did a, a tasting to us of, of several glenmorangis several glenmore which at that time was belonging to them and the arbeck 10 at the end which i hated it right from the start it, it was my first heavily pitted whiskey uh, so i had the impression to literally eat earth liquid earth so i hated it but i uh, remember it was something different uh, it was also at that time i discovered lagavulin 16 and i loved it very very much my first bomos uh, and coolila as well but this was something very different now i know that this has changed a lot this is a much uh, um, gentle i cannot say gentle but it's a, a much more tamed expression now than it was 20 years ago and even 10 15 years ago because i tried it several times my problem was i was unlucky with the first bottles i bought 2010 which were uh, for two times in a row i had to uh, bring back the bottle at the shop uh, and it was expertized and certified as flowed there was some ugly mustiness it was not the cork apparently but probably the casks as i was told uh, there was huge mustiness it was almost undrinkable uh, and i don't know what happened with the cask in the warehouses but they were not uh, not good they were flowed so they tasted it they uh, accepted to replace it the first time but it seems they gave me the same batch or another batch that was also flowed so i had to go back to get another bottle and this time i said i don't want our bag i want another brand uh, pitted whiskey and i went uh, out with a kulila which i never had any problem uh, but what happened last month i got uh, some discount uh, money on uh, my local uh, supermarket hypermarket let's rather say with a huge choice of whiskies and while i was initially going for buying the Wibisti five years old which i tried and liked a lot uh, they didn't have it. They only had the Yugadel, uh, Corey Reckon, and that one. And I had 15 euros to uh, use. And I said, okay, if it's not good, I will, uh, I will complain less. And if it's good, I will be happy to buy it instead of 50 euros, th 15 euros less. So that's what I did. Then I opened it, and then I said, oh no here we go again <laughs> now this is the third or fourth pour so i'm gonna still give him its chance uh, but i really hope it's gonna be okay um, i took some notes and the rating i tried the most possible uh, some i heard somewhere somebody say uh, my tastings are objective there's no objective tastings everything is subjective uh, the only thing you can tamper of your subjectivity is uh, when you have experience like me yes yeah, sorry to say it but 
then again with this criteria you have to put yourself to assess whiskies for people in video you have to at some point of the tasting you have to put yourself in the place of someone else trying to speak about the pros and cons about this whiskey and get a balanced uh, comment and rating after you can rent and you can and I will do <laughs> so uh, I will try to do my best to uh, I will be subjective but to give it his chance okay I might do this review too early but I want to speak of so many whiskies uh, this year that uh, I did this choice uh, it's under the famous neck pour, which I uh, not relate too much to personally, but it's still not in the... I mean, I could have waited it to be here. But I give it half an hour, if not more, air, even if I quite partly covered it. So we'll see what's going on with this one. Okay, talk too much, so... But you know me now. Oh, there's one info I forgot to tell you because I checked prior to record a video interviewing, I uh, hope it's Colin, I didn't mistake, Mr. Gordon, who is now taking care of the distillery, and he confirmed uh, that is not colored whiskey. There's no one E158 there. But my question and problem is why isn't it on the label? while they are stating it's non-chill filtered. I don't understand it. Some distilleries do not uh, mention uh, that they don't color and they don't chill filter, but it's very rare to see only one of the two information stated where there's, there's room on the label uh, to put some slash after that and say not colored or natural color. I don't understand why they don't do that. Does that mean that in the past they did color? This is possible. I have no evidence of pro and con this information, this statement. Okay, viscosity. This is, uh, this is when I have some doubts about the chill filtration. I'm sorry. The rent is starting. The, the legs are really not sticking long on the glass. I also unfortunately had the same problem on the uh, Orchid House from Compass Box, but I knew the average age was seven years old and a few more uh, older stuff. Then the, the older, the younger here is 10 years old, if there is any older. And it's chill non-chill filtered, but why is that not as oily as I expected? I don't know. Uh, is it related to the cut, which is narrow, to the purifier, maybe? So we're losing things here, uh, fat, oiliness, congeners-wise, I don't know. This is something mysterious. Now let's get to the nose. So it's a bit gentler than when it was poured, but there's still this kind of a acrid, pungent smoke that is typical from Ardbeg that I rarely find in other Isla whiskies, for instance, at the same level, at the same uh, with the same impression. Uh, I want to say it's earthy, but no, it's rather tarry, a lot of tar. Uh, creosote a bit as well. That's a wood smoke a bit. Now I double checked because people always talked about phenols, but phenols, uh, according to Whiskey and Wisdom, which I really recommend you, the website about peat, and of course Eladi Whiskey Nerd, I already talked about it. Phenol is responsible for delivering, the, the article says, uh, the medicinal iodine-like characteristics often described as likened to antiseptic, antiseptic TCP, etc. There's not much of this there. Guayacol is responsible for burnt and smoky notes, but isn't discernible in taste. Uh, oh, sorry, it's discernible in taste only, not in uh, nosing. Syringol is responsible for burnt and smoky notes, both discern but discernible in aroma only. Okay. 
Then we have Crisol. Crisol is responsible for the medicinal characteristics that are a bit more organic. Earthy peat, tariness, moss and coal tar notes. Yeah, we got some there, definitely. So you see it's quite a complex question, the peat. Uh, like I said, the level of peat is, is around 50, 54, maybe more. Uh, so it's uh, oh, it's more than Kilhoman, more than Port Charlotte, of course less than Ocremore, uh, more than any other distilleries on the Isla Island, uh, except when they state it's heavily pitted. Uh, but again, not many are going up to 55, of what I know. Um, then what do we get else? We get some vanilla, we get some um, fresh and dried herbs. So the, so lots of grassiness, slightly floral, gently floral. We get a bit of citrus fruit. Again, w uh, there's a fruit I don't like uh, and it comes across a lot here. So this might impact my uh, way of describing it. It's, it's grapefruit get a lot of grapefruit on the nose get also some tea but some quite neutral tea almost with some yeah chamomile uh, get also some i wrote so mio which is a no not really uh briny but also some licorice yeah so it's not unpleasant it's very distinctive it's very different not really a lot to my liking but but for me it's more interesting than the the palette in a way i will see what's going on with the palette slangeva mm. interesting okay it starts to open up i think i'm gonna change again the rating it's terrible to change all the time the ratings but it's normal because it's still not um okay in the palettes it's way more interesting than the two first three first um, tries the first one always was terrible um, so there's some sugar qualities in the palette that I like some crystallized uh, ginger crystallized uh, did I say it's refill uh, it's mainly refill bourbon cask and first feel also uh, so no sherry in there uh, sherry is more in Yugadel and there's not only sherry there's also some bourbon cask in there um okay so comes across more gentle now um everything is more melted than previous times you still have this um herbal uh, grassy i mean grassy dry herbs thing which is dominant but now there's a bed of vanilla and citrus fruit a bit of licorice um, the tar is very tame there you can barely feel it there's a pit smoke a bit woody a bit slightly earthy uh, it's more gentle uh, than on the nose um, at, at some point I, I even wondered the creaminess that the, the manager talks about I even wondered if it was due to caramel cor coloring to be honest because kind of res not residual sugar as I get sometimes in the young malt uh, very unpleasant one for instance in some uh, commercial early 2000 Glen Farkless was almost crazy i i thought they added sugar in it uh, and and uh pure alcohol it was awful some no itch statement ones were really bad um but we're in island not in space side right 
Uh, okay, so more civilized than last time I tried it, so I'm going to increase the rating. So you see, I thought it would be a total car crash, but it is not. That's interesting. Last sip before I diluted a bit. Okay, it's, it's rather good now. I'm surprised. I'm very surprised how it changed between not the first and the second, but the third sip. Uh, third pour and this fourth pour. Very surprised. And reassured a bit. <laughs> so I might temper my uh, rent. Okay, there's more balance now than I thought. Way more. Um, so I was too quick on judging the whiskey, which can happen to everyone. Now, you still have in the palate, for those who don't like grapefruit, you still have this grapefruit note that I don't like, but it is wrapped into a vanilla, kind of, kind of a bit lightly sugared cream, almost with almonds. Um, in the, this version, there's a hint of mint, and to be more precise, chlorophyll, that comes across more, even a kind of... Uh, uh, chewing gum uh, uh, with chlorophyll uh, in the there's a note of that in the Eric Nambis 16 years old one of my favorite art bag nevertheless uh, but we're gonna see the other favorite is on the table I wonder at this point if it's relevant to try the uh, the AR7, the indie bottling, because it's quite different. So I might be shorter on that to give it more a chance during the uh, Elixir Distillers episode coming in, I hope, soon. Okay. So yeah, it's it's a, there's something love or hate about our bag. Of course, there's a policy, but it's also of releasing things that are not really, for me, very interesting. Uh, I also have issues with some finishes with Manzania finish. I own also the art bog, which I was uh, offered but uh, by a friend, but I never opened it because I knew I didn't want it. So it's something I want to swap or sell uh, uh, with something else. But I, I problem is I don't want to put into auction and, and uh, uh, to expenses about that. And also now with Brexit and all, I don't want to send it overseas. So if someone is interested uh, and in is in continental Europe or has a, a, a way to be shipped it by its own means uh, uh, after getting it into France, let me know. Because I don't have a lot of budget of money and I had to find tricks to get new whiskies and uh, uh, swap things sometimes. Okay, so with a bit of water, the nose is uh, way more gentle, but still characteristic of this herbal thing, of this uh, gra grapefruit thing, and the the tar, the, the 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 peat smoke, which is more pungent than other um, distilleries. Okay, okay, let's go on the palate with uh, a few drops of water. Okay, it's a bit more gentle, but I will surprise you. I almost prefer it without water. Yeah, this is not not the longest whiskey. It's not the most interesting with the water. I will maintain this. Um, will give you the rating later on or uh, wait wait a minute I'll be back okay so the temporary score is around 85.5 but it's not a definitive score it's a, it's a temporary score uh, I don't know how far it's gonna evolve I will keep you posted but 
Yeah, okay. It's less interesting with water. Surprisingly for me. But to be honest, I tried the Port Charlotte uh, 10 years old I bought from a 2022 batch. I was so blown away of how it did change compared to the first releases back to 2018 or 16. Wow. So this is way more interesting than this. But this is just the beginning of the two bottles. We you'll hear more about that. Okay. Now to the collector's bottle. And I don't know, I think I might withdraw the art bag uh, in the uh, or just do a sip, not to frustrate you too much. But here is the big deal of my collection. It's when they restarted the production in 1997, 1998. And they did, uh, where is it? They did, uh, where, where is it? Uh, they did a very young, they did a still young, all no age statements, and then they did this, and then the Renaissance. Uh, I tried the other ones, they were nice, but I preferred this one by far. Uh, this is a pure masterpiece for me. Uh, I think it's all bourbon, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, yeah, it's a committee release, a bottle at 54.1. It's a nine years old, distilled in 1998, uh, bottle 2007, and not eight or six as I read. Uh, it's written here, so come on, guys. Uh, and come on, uh, even Malt Whiskey Yearbook, correct your infos, right? Uh, it happens. I, I do mistakes also. So you have the, the uh, bottle here. So the PT Path to Maturity, 1998. Yeah, I think it's 1998 they, they uh, start, and the box as well. So this is getting low. I don't drink it often because it's a rare stuff. But shouldn't say it, but I have a backup bottle of this because it's. I mean, I managed to get it to the fair price. I lost my uh, uh, written sheet about it, but I have it. Uh, here, almost there. I won't give you the rate right now because it's spectacular. Uh, but I got my notes. Uh, haven't counted how many diverse notes I get, but uh, there's a lot. Now, uh, once again, disclaimer, when you assess a whiskey in the video, basically we'll spend maybe 10 minutes for the full experience, not talking about the presentation, but the, the, the uh, uh, nosing, tasting, and give a mark. When I assess a whiskey home, I spend way more a lot of time than that. Especially when I have to write notes for specific purpose. Uh, I can spend half an hour with the whiskey, so this is not the time I can spend here. So bear with me, and if I think my uh, abilities now are not so efficient as when I assessed it uh, when it was uh, less full, uh, more full, I mean, the bottle, uh, I will uh, complete with my own uh, notes. So uh, before I forget, please let me know what's uh, your experience with Arbeck 10, because I heard recently some uh, YouTubers say they were a bit agreeing with me that there was decline of quality compared to uh, five, ten years ago. I, I don't know what you think about that. Is it true in your experience? Let me know. Now, this is the beast. It's not Iring Nambis, it's not Wee Beastie, but it's a it's, uh, terrific whiskey. And there, just to contradict what was said before, the legs are sticking a bit more. Of course, there's the ABV. Uh, higher but not so much color I don't talk often about color because uh, it doesn't come across necessarily as I see it on the camera and with my lighting but for me it's a bit like the previous one so it's a muscade between muscade and chardonnay so rather pale people sometimes I don't we don't have time for that I, I should do a full episode about color in whiskey 
I will do that someday. <laughs> so don't don't trust the color of whiskey except if it's a 10 euro supermarket low shelf and it's uh, amber like hell etc. You will know it's mostly due to col caramel coloring. But if a whiskey is very pale that doesn't mean it's bad. It can be if it's four six fill uh, cask it's I mean doesn't say do nothing but it can also be uh, something like this on the nose <laughs> everything I don't like in the other art bags uh, I don't have it here so again cask all casks are different what do you make of that it's a limited release uh, how many bottles uh, I'm not sure I have the info there. Ooh. Ah, damned. I don't know, it says limited edition. Um, should have double checked that. Sorry. Oh, yes, yeah, so when they say third release, it's directly uh, related to Still Young, first release 2006. And very young. So very young, still young, almost there. There you have first, second, and third release for those interested in the history of limited releases of Outback. And of course, I tried the Trayvan, which is quite nice. Uh, recent Yugadales, I mean, a few years ago, were nice, but a bit uh, different from before. I mean, bef in the first releases uh, of uh, Yugadale. Uh, 2004 uh, they used to add a 1975 uh, cask in it yeah I know that this is a big difference you can feel it believe me uh, and they dropped this use maybe they still a few older casks than seven eight ten years old uh, it's probably more now but they dropped the 30 years old 25 30 years old they were using at the beginning I don't know if you knew that. So this is much more balanced between all the elements I talked before. Uh, the uh, smoky, peaty, bit earthy, tarry, uh, grassy, floral, etc. This is way more balanced. The nose is something else. Now I gotta check my own notes because when I uh, assessed the whiskey, uh, I wrote more than superb, a bit, uh, yeah, with the beginning, so with a bit spirity, very complex, uh, moderately smoky and peaty. It reveals even non diluted, beautiful notes of lemon, creamy lemon, mixed with uh, grassy peat, floral notes such as lavender, violet, but very tamed, it's not Beaumont. Uh, not certain but more uh, fruity uh, so pear exotic fruit banana pineapple uh, also some uh, estuary uh, notes like I say uh, English licorice all sorts even some marshmallow the numerous esters I wrote uh, uh, really uh, betray the uh, presence of a lot of first field bourbon casks for me the spices as well, black pepper, uh, a hint of chili pepper, and dried herbs. So it's an assault, a bit rude uh, at first pour, uh, from the first uh, part, uh, first third of the of the bottle. I mean, uh, it seems very young but very promising. And it would becomes fabulous with uh, a bit of air, uh, with more exotic fruit notes. Uh, Okay, there's some notes that are becoming even candid and evoke a young Brora despite its young age. It's what I wrote. Now let's go to the palette neat, then we'll double check my notes. I hope it's not influenced by the 10. Wow. 
this is what our bag should be and this is what the best our bags i mean young one okay should be uh, having the ground the foundation on this kind of profile in my opinion um should i try oh man i haven't thought i will do that let's uh, pause a second yeah okay sorry i i i didn't thought i would assess this again uh, marks wise but i thought uh, i have to um because uh, i have the score i gave uh almost 10 years ago 57 euros can you imagine <laughs> in 2008 i think this now is way more expensive if you can find it my advice i'm not gonna push anyone if you find this for less than 150 euros an auction go for it because it's a masterpiece in my opinion forget everything core range everything limited release i mean i'm not speaking about the high-end ones of course but get this if you really like Artberg and isla whiskies if you want something that can evoke evoke the magnificence of older Kulila, older port allens i mean older between 20 30 years old this gives you a hint of that in my opinion and yeah the score will is going to be very high again still now in 2023 when well, i bought this in 2008 or so so okay last sip before i dilute it and yeah we will probably withdraw i'm sorry the year uh, d1 oh, it's so beautiful let me check my notes um powerful and a bit spirited not more now no more now herbal pitied and maritime yeah just a bit his first off uh, rounder and gourmet uh, with it's in French so I have to translate it sorry uh, it, it brings back the, the, the nose from uh, the notes from the nose becomes a bit more intense and dry uh, going uh, um, finishing a bit too early because it betrayed its youth uh, so a shorter um, finale finish uh, I don't think now of it now I mean it becomes way richer yeah it's I say it's rich a bit cre of creaminess uh, when diluted let's wait for the dilution which for me uh, in my memory is a spectacular thing to do with this whiskey yeah it's gonna be one hour video again it is life and i have to change now my uh, thumbnail well, we'll see we'll see if i give it a minute for the air r7 just to give you a hint of what it can be with the other cask type with more impact on the distillate because it's peak sherry okay stunning it is exactly what i thought a while ago when you add a few drops just a few drops you have the impression to have a 20 years old on the palate weird a bit like my first tasting blind by the way of an early edition of ben Martin. I, I like a lot ben Romar, by the way okay so The combination there within all the elements smoky pt floral less way less grassy than the 10 uh less harsh smoke it's that's a complete different beast it's very weird i cannot understand that difference and you're gonna feel it in the rating 
because it's one year less of course it's a bit higher ABV uh, well almost 10% uh, more 8% more but come on the cask selection there is uh, top-notch I mean it's way better than the for the 10 but it's normal 10 it's normal not normal but understandable let's say because it's core range 10 years old is core range and widely distributed this is a limited release probably less than 10,000 bottles I don't know so we're talking uh, 10 to 20 or 50 percent less bottles uh, I don't know uh, let's go back to my notes magnificent and now quite uh, close to the Renaissance expression launch first as a cast strength in summer 2020 uh, 28 sorry dilutions very interesting uh, it works like uh, reverse lifting I mean giving 10 years more <laughs> the maturity and the depth of a 10 years 20 years old this is uh, stunning overwhelming the water if it's well dosed makes um, this, the, the flavors more uh, to fusion more between uh, one and, and the others and uh, wraps things in a creamy sensation uh, I wrote post orgasmic <laughs> very comfortable <laughs> uh, the multitude of pitted maritime maritime is very um, tame it's very discreet sea spray and stuff it's not talisker uh, I mean it's not like Evelyn either fruity smoky herbal delicately spacey the ginger is very discreet uh, black pepper as well uh, oak the oak is very sweet gives a, a finish with a, a, l an amazing length uh, I wrote with uh, some notes at the very end in, in ritual olfaction as well when you swallow it Quince, star anise uh, uh, yeah I wrote there's a coussin de Lyon which is a French pastry uh, with alm uh, uh, I mean it's uh, what was it it's French pastry with uh, noyau de poissy liqueur in it almond li uh, apricot almond liqueur uh, and it's yeah sensational let's go back to the current tasting Yeah, the star anise and this um, slightly maritime and uh, makes it jump into a way another level. Let's pause to write a score. All right, so the rating is 95. So 1.5 less than uh, the, the one I have recorded. Uh, um, and earlier uh, established earlier on 95 out of 100 mm, bear in mind that my rating scale it's on my website is a bit higher than many and for instance uh, my reference is whiskey whiskey fun Sir Valentin my compatriot usually there's four points less than him so it's rather 91 for the uh, and also if I I think people like uh, the guys of Malt Reviews maybe will maybe score like that something like this uh, maybe less I don't know uh, now people like Dustin and Mike from Top Shelf hi if you see this video maybe we'll score it with an 89 or 90 I don't know uh, I'll be curious if they had this one uh, Ralphie I don't know uh, and um, yeah so before I stop because I promised it and in, in the table and for me it's another experience or just symbolically try it uh, uh, just show it to you but it's not a proper review I think we'll just try this but I still have I'm I'm so pleased with it the almost there so you see it's 10 points more there the almost there than the uh, all around 10 points 
more than the Albic 10. And it was almost the same price. Something to meditate about <laughs> when it was released. Look at this. First feel, uh, where is it? It's, I mean, it's a different beast uh, for sure. Uh, 14 years old, 56.3. Elixir Distillers, Elements of Isla, it was uh, bottled, uh, when it was bottled, I don't even have the date, shame, uh, maybe on, on the box, uh, which is not uh, its box, 56.3, foolproof, uh, yeah, it was something around the, uh, yeah, 2015 maybe, gotta do more research and yeah we in one hour mark wow very tarry very bonfiery we are now in the fireplace or uh, outside on, on the beach and we are having um, some raisins dates and stuff and we are also having a pitted whiskey that's going to about it Whoa, oh, oh, oh. yeah, all, um, I mean, the, the peaks, Pedro Jimenez, Sherry Sweetness, combined with the, uh, a burst of peat, but it's tamed a bit, since it, it begun much more powerful, and with um, some chocolate, some raisins, some soaked in, not armagnac, yeah, but yeah, in pigs, <laughs> all kinds of fruits, dried fruits, mainly uh, soaked in. Uh. So it's it's a different experience. It's 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 not uh, your regular art bag. Just put some drops. Am I obliged to do, to drink it now? But well, I haven't ate. It's around two hours now. Oh my god! Spent a lot of time preparing this. Oh, nice chimney smoke. Um, it's very dense. Now, compared to the almost there, it loses a lot of its complexity and refinement. I got to say refinement, elegance. It's not a bulldozer. It's not a sherry monster. But it's a sherry peaks driven whiskey, smoky whiskey. So it's it's I love it. It's beautiful, but it's completely different and less natural coming uh, coming across natural expression of art big. Okay, I have to stop it now. So I hope it was interesting for you and uh, that you learn things maybe and also that you hear that nuance and patience in assessing a whiskey is also something lesson learned from me first <laughs> let me know your experience with our bag and with the 10 years old please in particular also please if you had the almost there let me know your thoughts and see you soon thanks